Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the HP ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on CPUs, but in the video series as a whole we're going to cover CPUs, RAM, drives, both solid state and hard drives. We're going to go over the different types of chassis for the DL360 Gen 9, how to install Windows Server Operating Systems, how to install VMware, plus a whole bunch more. So click that like, smash that subscribe, and let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server. This video, as I mentioned, is going to be specifically focused on processors, so let's hop in. So what we're going to cover in this video, we're going to go over the different compatible processors. We're going to discuss some of our favorites as far as low-end value and high-end, and then we're actually going to show you how to install and remove an old one if you want to upgrade your processor. So let's just go ahead and hop in and talk about how to do it. So um, what are the compatible processors? Well, first off, there's two CPU sockets. It's an LGA. 2011-3 socket, which means it accepts E5 2600v3 and E5 2600v4. Those would be the compatible processors. And people ask us all the time, hey, what processors do you recommend? And our response is always, well, it depends on your application, right? So depending on what your application is, you might want some uh, low-end processors that are very, very budget-friendly. You might want the value sweet spot where you get you know, a good spec, but it's still cheap overall. Or you might want some of the high-end ones, which right now there's some really, really great V4s. So let's just start with the low-end. So on the low-end side, there's two processors in particular that we recommend. It's the E5 2620V3 and the E5 26 30 v3 these are very very budget friendly processors uh, you're going to get a six core and an eight core and they're both 2.4 gigahertz uh, but realistically i'll be honest uh, at this point with this machine uh, those are probably a little bit too low in i would honestly recommend at least starting with the value and going up from there and really even the high-end ones are at a very good uh, budget price point nowadays where you can get two 18 core procs for you know anywhere from 400 to 600 uh, dollars and that's uh, a really great machine when you think about it and still very budget friendly but let's stay with the value so there's three cpus that we recommend on the value side that's going to be the e5 2660 v3 the e5 2670 v3 and the e5 2680 v3 that's going to be a 10 core 12 core 12 core 2.6 2.3 2.5 those are all great value procs, and again, they're very budget friendly at this uh, point in time, and they're going to be great specs overall. So now if you want to spend a little bit more, the high-end CPUs, which we build quite frequently and we stock a ton of these, are going to be uh, some great procs. So, so there's five high-end CPUs that we recommend, the E5 2690v4, the E5 2695v4, the E5 2697, 98, and the 99v4. All these are great processors that we build with on a daily basis. They are still actually really budget friendly even though they are the high-end CPUs. And again, you could put two of these into, into a machine, not completely break the bank, and build out a server for you know anywhere from three to maybe six grand that a new server that would be rivaling that would be 15 to 20 grand so it's a really good option on the high end side um, and again stuff that we stock constantly and you'll find on our configurator when you go to our website to build these out okay all right so now that we know a little bit more about uh, the CPUs actually we forgot to mention the specs so the specs for those five are going to be uh, 14 core uh, 18, 18, 20, 22. Um, on the speeds, you're going to have uh, 2.6, 2.1, 2.3, 2.2, 2.2. So those are the specs overall. Um, and again, those are all really, really great procs to use. So now what we're going to do is actually show you how to remove your old proc and install a new proc. And we're going to show you two different ways to actually do that. Uh, HP has a blue clip that they recommend using. You don't necessarily need to use that, but we can show you how to do both. And uh, let's go ahead and hop in. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. All right, have my ESD gear on. We are safe to work inside our machine. So I laid out everything that we are going to need. So the new CPUs that we are going to upgrade to, which in this case is going to be one of our high-end CPUs, the E52698 V4. I left some uh, spaces here so that we can take our old CPUs out, put them in. And then you are going to need a T15 screwdriver. Uh, that is what we're going to be using here. We have our whole set that we had laying out in the beginning of the video, but T15 is what you're going to need to be able to remove the heat sink. And then this is the clip that you can or cannot use. You, can, you don't necessarily need it uh, to install the CPU inside the socket. So let's just go and hop in and show you how to do it. So we're going to move all of our stuff to the side for now. We're going to pop our latch, make sure it's set to unlock, lift it up pretty much like any HPE server you've been in before. 
So we're going to start over here uh, with this CPU, and we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and remove it. So the first thing you're going to need is your screwdriver, the uh, T15 that we were mentioning. So I personally like to use um, just a regular old screwdriver in the sense of obviously it has to be a T15. Um, and I also like to go across almost like we were doing uh, changing a tire. Uh, but again, I like to use the regular screwdriver as opposed to an electric screwdriver. It gives you a real feel for when the uh, screws are coming off the motherboard as a whole. So I can really feel it lifting up like right there. So the last one, let's go ahead and finish it off. And now we're just going to lift our, CP, or our heat sink up. And when we lift our heat sink up, you'll see we have some old thermal grease. So actually, we're going to need our rag to clean the old thermal grease and then uh, to clean the top of the CPU itself. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clean the heat sink. I'm going to do it off screen uh, just because I don't want any old thermal paste flaking off onto the motherboard or into our uh, CPU socket or dim slots. So just a nice little wipe down, nice and clean as a whole. We can technically get a little bit cleaner, but it's good enough. Now, depending on the situation here, this isn't bad at all. Sometimes you'll have so much thermal paste that it's all over the place. When it's everywhere, I personally like to just get a rag and clean it up so that way when we remove our CPU, it's not falling into the exposed uh, uh, CPU pins because if it gets into the CPU pins, it's a disaster and it could honestly result in you having to replace the whole motherboard, which is just a situation you want to be in. So right now it's not much on there, so we don't need to clean it. So I'm just going to remove it and put the CPU into our tray, clean it over there, and then put the new CPU in. So let's go ahead and get started. So overall, HPE made this pretty easy, and thank you for that. So you're just going to take this first latch right here. You're just going to push it down and in and unhook it from right here. So you're just going to push it down, and it's going to pop up. And you'll notice nothing has happened as far as the socket hasn't come up. So now you're going to take this one over here. You're going to push it down and push it in as well. And you see it just popped open. Essentially, this is what was holding it down. So when this came up, it now releases it and we can move it to the side and we can physically remove our old CPU. So I personally like to grab right here and here just a little bit of more open space than right here. So I'm just going to squeeze my finger in here, grab this and lift it straight up. And again, I like to stress the straight up. And I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side and clean my CPU later. And we're going to go ahead and put in some new CPUs, but I do want to stress when you're lifting it up, you have to come straight up. Um, you definitely, and I took the clean CPU, um, you don't want to drag it. And I stress this point because people will drag it. And when they do, that's when you wipe out a row of the pins. And the next thing you know, you got dim slots that aren't functioning and it becomes a whole problem. So again, that's the one thing I really stress. Just make sure you lift it straight up, okay? Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out uh, is that HP has this blue clip. You can technically install the CPU directly on, or you can hook it to the clip and slide it right here. There's a, a slot that you actually slide it in and then push the uh, socket down. Uh, you can go either way. Technically, I like to personally just install it like this. Make sure that you have the gold triangle that you see on the CPU facing this direction, so in this corner. And then you're just going to come in here, and you want to just drop this down safely where it's just nice and again you want to come straight down and again the gold triangle this direction so now we're just going to go ahead and push this down push our latch in so you're just going to slide this down push this latch in as well and the cpu is physically installed so next we're going to need our thermal paste all right so we have our thermal paste i'm going to go ahead and open it up you really don't need a ton just a little bit in the middle right there and I like to just wipe the uh, extra residue that comes off so that I can put my top back on and not make a complete mess. And honestly, that was decently clean. And that's really it. That's all you need. You don't need a ton. And when you install your CPU, I call it the, uh, the peanut butter and jelly. You're going to smash it together, and it's just going to nice and even spread over the whole CPU. And it's not going to be so much that it's all over the edges, but it'll be plenty to cool the CPU as a whole. So now we're just going to reinstall our heatsink. So we're going to take our heatsink, 
and put it back on. And one thing I actually do want to note, um, this is processor one and this is processor two. I probably should have pointed that out earlier in the video, but uh, it does say it right here on the motherboard, processor one and processor two in case you're wondering. Uh, so now let's just go ahead and put our heat sink back on. So you just want to line all your screws up. And again, when you push this on, it's going to make a nice even distribution for all of uh, your thermal paste. So let's go ahead and get this screwed in. So I like to go in kind of a uh, zigzag pattern. So we're going to come over here and you're going to actually have to kind of push this down to make sure it connects. And you'll feel it get tight. And again, that's one of the reasons I like using your regular old manual screwdriver as opposed to an electric one. You'll feel it get nice and tight. And just like that, with a little elbow grease and a little thermal paste, we're able to install our CPU. So we'll go ahead and knock out CPU 2 on our own to not waste everyone's time, but I just wanted to show you the general process as a whole. And again, if you are looking to get any CPU upgrades, any uh, RAM upgrades, any uh, custom-built servers, whether that's HPE, Supermicro, IBM, Dell, Cisco, we like to build up. Uh, the whole life cycle. So if you want E3, E5, if you want new Intel scalable, if you want AMD Ryzen's, AMD Epics, we do everything in between and we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And if you made it this far, hey, click that like and smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by guys.